My name is Tandong Uta from Azuka Group. We are a technology innovation and technology development company. We've got three verticals that we specialize in. One is health, uh, the second one is infrastructure and transport, the biggest one is education. So we come up with different solutions in the education space. We have implemented uh, e-learning in different spaces like Fouting, Free State, um, a bit of Eastern Cape, a bit of uh, UAE as well, uh, Arab Emirates as well as Singapore. Um, we would like to have an opportunity to partner with the Samsung um, as a big, uh, big brother. Um, this is uh, Roland. Roland is our uh, chief technology officer. And Mpo is our chief financial officer. So she's just here to hear if I talk about any monies, she she starts she stops me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's basically who we are. Uh, today I'm going to talk about our brand uh, that talks to e-learning, which is we said under excellent. So under excellent we've developed um, a platform that talks to curriculum delivery. It talks to uh, tutor uh, solutions, it talks to assessments, it talks to teacher development or training, it talks to tracking of strengths and weaknesses in the class, outside the class, teacher, as well as the whole schooling system. It also includes uh, the parents as well at the same time, in terms of monitoring and engaging uh, what each and every learner is experiencing in the class. So we call it um, an education experience solution more than anything else. Uh, it covers all elements of the teaching and learning uh, spectrum. So that's basically who we are. And uh, I'm not sure if you want to introduce yourselves before I can continue talking for the next two hours. Okay, I'm Ashtra Rabindalazi, I'm head of corporate citizenship for Samsung. Yeah, it's up to me again. Uh, part of the technical support team, and it's going to be from the academy. Thanks. I'm Masabata. Later. Thanks very much. Guys, thanks very much. Um, I won't delay, I won't take too much time. Um, I think the biggest reason why we're here today is just to showcase what we do uh, in brief. We're not going to talk about lots of things. I'm going to focus on what I spoke to you about in as far as the platform is concerned. Uh, what we do is excellent. We do more than just the platform. Um, we also provide augmented reality solutions that talks to next generation technologies in terms of the three verticals. In the education space, we've got your 3D, 4D uh, simulators as well. But today I'm just going to talk about the platform because I believe that's what you would like to see today. Okay, so what I'll do now, um, I'll basically talk in as a, as a student so we can see what a student will be, be able to see. The curriculum mainly manages the whole ecosystem in terms of from a perspective of a teacher to the perspective of a principal up to the level of an MEC. But what we've also incorporated is the opportunity for the parents to get involved. I think all of us would have appreciated our parents getting involved on a daily basis because our performance would have really improved. And we've also then made sure that we include the engagement of a parent and the parent knowing exactly what's happening in their children's life in as far as learning and teaching is concerned. But most importantly, making sure we base, I mean, what you're going to see today is based on research for the past eight years that we've done in the field, that we've done as part of our education team that has basically been involved in the implementation of e-learning in different spaces. And the biggest find that we, we basically found out there is the importance of making sure you manage the ecosystem in terms of not only just processes, but how do we make sure teachers have uh, the latest pedagogical methods in terms of delivering lessons? How do we empower teachers at the same time to prepare the best lessons? How do we empower them to prepare the best assessments and review the assessments and be able to give feedback to the learners? And you are then able to manage that real time. So our platform is an online platform. We've got a, a a zero rated URL uh, solution where learners, parents, teachers, and every stakeholder can basically go into the system without having to have data. 
So I know every time people ask the question, hey, we don't have connectivity in the rural areas and others. We don't need connectivity. Whenever you have similar uh, connectivity, you would have access uh, to our platform at the same time. So I'll log in right now as a learner and show you what actually the system is able to do for a learner. After that, I will log in as a teacher, and the last one I will log in as a principal, and then maybe show you, if we still do have time, how a parent would be able to engage their learner at the same time, or their child at the same time. Is that fair? Yes. At any stage, if you have questions, let's engage. And uh, so we make it as, uh, as, as proactively involved as possible. Uh, otherwise, I feel like a pastor. <laughs> All right. Okay. Every person that will have a login into our system will be able to log in anywhere where there is internet, whether you're in Dubai, whether you're in Thailand, whether you're in Kunu, whether you're in Soweto, anywhere there, where there is access to the internet, you'll be able to connect and be able to have access to the system. So now I will log in as grade 8 Ukanto and then show you that actually. The biggest plus with this dashboard, and the reason why we've designed it this way, is to make sure we are able to publish each and everything that's happening in each and every class, each and every grade, in each and every learner's progress, and in each and every school. And right now, the, one of the biggest challenges is not only the quality of education, but it's making sure we provide equality across all different spectrum of education. <coughs> but the biggest challenge is accurate data. I know you've been involved in, in implementing education, um, uh, classrooms, labs, etc. Now you would know that just getting a, a list of all the, the, the classes, the teachers, the learners is a problem. It, just in one school. Just for them to know accurately who is in grade eight, e, it's a challenge. Now this platform allows you to gather data real time, anytime where you are, you are able to get real time data. Per class, per learner, per school, per district, per circuit, per province. And if you are a Minister of Education, you are able to look at the whole country and see exactly where it's basically lacking at any given stage. So what are we looking at now? Uka has logged in. He can see his dashboard, his subjects on the left hand side. He can see a um, user guide that tells him exactly what he can do on the system. There are two, two marks that he looks at. So if you look, he's doing five subjects, but out of the five subjects, he doesn't do natural science and physical sciences. Now there are two marks. The one on the left hand side is his actual mark. The one on the right hand side is his target mark. So we've designed it based on schema theory that says we need to empower learners to be independent learners at the same time. So for you to be able to be an independent learner, one of the first things you need to learn is to be accountable for your own learning and what happens in the classroom and what happens in terms of what needs to be done, whether it's your assignments and so forth. But most importantly, you know, for instance, you knew uh, at school, did you do that at school? You did, you did uh, biology? Business? So you know in business, for instance, that you are possibly 50% or 80%, right? And you know that your neighbor or your friend, though you love your friend, they are not necessarily getting the same marks. So each and every learner has got their own unique target, which is very important because one of the biggest things with the platform is it allows the school, the principal, the deputy principal, up to the teacher to be able to understand each and every learner and understand their weaknesses and strengths and be able to track them at any given stage. Which means if you are setting an, an assignment, you don't want to set one assignment for all of them. You can literally set an assignment that is specifically for Tsepo. Because Tsepo is good in visuals, but he's not good in drawing, right? Or he's good in visuals, but he's not good in mathematics. So we focus on those weaknesses to make them strengths, right? So just by looking at this, you can see how well you're doing on all your subjects, right? Uh, let's say we go through life science. Now, we've added other features as well. I mean, everyone would remember wearing um, blazers at school. Right? I come from an era where there was blazers. I'm not sure what there is at this stage. And you will have scrolls that will say swimming, academia, etc. So we've created our own digital scrolls as well in, on your right hand side, the course achievements. 
So as you engage the system, it gives you scrolls and it awards you. And the teacher can use this as, as an incentive as well in the class. On your um, dashboard, you can see your current grade. You can see your target grade. You can be able to engage your grade and change your grade at the same time if you want to change your grade. Right? Now, you can also see all your subjects in terms of in terms of the you can see all your subject uh, uh, outstanding assignments at the same time. These are real-time assignments. Now, there are a few people that can set up assignments. The first one is your parents can set up assignment for you. So I always say this every time I meet people to say, every time you knock off from work, there is a chance that you'll spend an hour or two waiting for traffic. That's the time you should be engaging with your children and see how far they're doing, set them assignments, see how well they've done today. The real time you're able to see what's happening. By the time you get home, your children are tired, they want to sleep, but at least you know you've been engaging them. You've set up their assignments, you've looked at how far they are in terms of each and every subject, what assignments they are struggling with. You can phone them and say, hey, I see you struggling here, and you are able to engage with them. The second um, assignment, uh, the learner can set up their own assignments which means this is self-assessment. So I've gone through a content, I want to check off I understand, then I can set up my own assessment at the same time. The third one is the teacher setting assessments for me to basically make sure that I'm engaged and to check off I do understand, I don't understand. And then up to the principal setting exams, you can set up exams, you can set up tests, you can have your previous exams as well loaded into the system and at the time where you need to prepare for exams, you can do everything in the system. Now the advantage is the school, from the principal to the teachers, are managing something they can touch, they can see. Because they can see real time that you are struggling with mathematics, she's struggling with biology. But she's not only struggling with biology, she's struggling with the cardiac vascular system, or she's struggling with the ears, or she's struggling with the plants, etc. And when you have camps, my friend there normally manages camps, Right? You take all the kids to one camp and remember, we all went to a camp and we were taught the same thing, but they could not manage us because they don't know who's who in the zoo in of understanding. There are children that mess up in the class. I think Tep was one of them. Because he was bright. Uh, he was bright. So a teacher would be explaining concept in chapter three and Tep is on chapter seven. So in the class he ends up talking to friends because he's poor. Yeah. Yeah. So you also have a chance in this platform to be able to manage your own progress and the teacher will be able to engage you. Whether in chapter 8 or in chapter 2, it doesn't matter. The teacher will be able to say, hey, Tsepo is on the radio in chapter 7, he's doing well on all the chapters, he knows how to engage Tsepo at a Tsepo level. Right. So another thing we've also included onto the platform, right, is the platform has analytics. So it analyzes Tsepo and says Tsepo, for instance, in this case, it says go and revise transport systems in Lamont. So it looks at your progress, it looks at where you are lacking, and it then recommends and sets you an assignment. So the system itself sets you an assignment, which means the system without your parents, without the teacher, engages you at a temple level. It's saying, Temple, go and revise transport systems in Lamont. Keep on working on this chapter and improve your score. Why? Because the system can see that you're not necessarily doing well in that particular chapter, right? Number two, it says go and learn for the first time, guess exchange, because this is your next concept in your qualification to cover. So it says go and revise where you don't understand, and let's move forward now to the next chapter. So without anyone's intervention, it's teaching you accountability and keeping you accountable at the same time, and keeping you progressing at the same time. And the last one says go and learn about IT factors because that's the next concept for you to look at based on your last covered concept. So just on your dashboard you can see your scrolls, you can see how far you are in terms of your current grade versus your target grade, you can see how many outstanding assignments you have, you can see outstanding assignments that were set by the system because it basically needs to engage with. Now the same thing, your parents can see, your teachers can see, your school can see, up to the MEC can see. Right. Now the next thing is the actual content. Uh, you need to start. Yes. 
So we've got content in the platform that is caps aligned. We can align it to REB, we can align it to Cambridge, we can align it to any curriculum. But in this country, the biggest curriculum is CAPS, and therefore what you're going to see is CAPS online. Now, for now, you are seeing grade 10, 11, and 12, but if you were UCA, you are only going to be seeing one grade. So, because this is a demo, uh, you see more than one grade. Now, what we've also done is we've broken down each and every term, each and every chapter, each and every unit into small bits and pieces. Right? So that you are able to understand it and you gradually are then finishing the chapter by finishing the unit, by finishing the concept, eventually the chapter is finished. And as you go on, you are able to be also tested at the same time. So for grade 11, 10, 3, you have guesses exchange and you have population ecology. Now it tells you per chapter now where you are in terms of your marks as well. So each and every chapter it tracks you in terms of your progress, how far you are. So you can see on guesses exchange, you have basically covered all in terms of guesses exchange. But your marks are not necessarily the best, right? But based on your target, I guess they are the best because your target is 60%. Now, you also have another chapter that you still need to go out and through. Now, if I press guess exchange, it will give me requirements for guess exchange as a sub uh, unit. And underneath there, it will give me units as well, which is guess exchange and guess audience. Now, I can then choose which chapter I want to cover, and I'm able to cover it. Now, this content you see is what you normally find in a textbook. You'll find it in an e in an e So, only all of it is here. The difference is this content is not static content that is just sitting there and you just go through it. What I can do, right? Sorry. Yes, sir. You said this thing generates questions. Yes. How does it generate its own questions? So the system has uh, intelligence, right? Analytics. So it analyzes your progress and it says, okay, it's is on chapter 8, right? He's done an assessment, like now we've just done the assessment under UCA, mm -hmm. and UCA has got 20%. So one of the things that UCA is going to see tomorrow, or next time he goes into his uh, subject, is that the system is going to say, please go and revise, that, because you've got 20%. So the system tracks your progress, it tracks your strengths, or your marks, in terms of where you are. Are you getting above your target or below your target? And it's able to then set up assignments and say, please go and revise. Here you are struggling. Please go on now to the next chapter because you're doing well. Let's go and revise the next chapter. So the system itself is designed to have a bit of uh, intelligence to understand exactly where you are as tech and where you are, you are lacking. What is your next chapter that you need to go and revise? And it set up the assignments. I, I, I hear you. I'm talking about the actual question. So it like have to be teacher that put the questions in, uh, in terms of what, what is on that one, or does it have a question bank? Okay. Yeah. It's got a question bank, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a question bank. So also, the teachers have to go in and put No, no, no. Okay. The system has a question bank of more than 75,000 different types of questions it can ask you in terms of any concept. Yes. So the moment you are struggling in chapter 3, MAMAS as an example, it will set up an assignment for you because it knows exactly which answers you got wrong. So it knows, it has created a matrix in terms of he's struggling when it comes to this part and that part. So it will first make sure in the question box it puts the question that you're struggling with. Right? And it sets up the assignment. Did I answer your question? Or did I try to answer the question? I, I, I hear what you're saying. So there's a set question box. So they don't go out. They don't? They so do. So they grow. Yeah. So what's on AI? So it actually grows. We we populated originally and it grows continually as the users use it. So each time a user inputs an answer, new metadata points created. It's called that. So it will, it, it won't ask you the same question each other. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah, no, I understand the part. You said there's 75,000 questions. Right? Yes. So seven five thousand and one. Yeah. Oh no, that I understand. Does someone paste and then put it into the bank? Initially, then system, and then the system builds it naturally after that. So the system, yeah. the, the, the system is basically configured with different types of questions. Yes. So you are basically saying maybe they've inputted seventy-five different types of questions, 
And these are the only questions that exist. Is that, is that the is that the understanding? Yeah. Okay. So we okay, based. Sorry, um, yeah. just you know to go back to what Sakura was asking. Yes. I think his, his concern is the maintenance of the system. Say we buy the system. I'm not saying that we will. But let's <coughs> say we buy the system, and now and um, the content. How is it going to be updated? Yeah. You know? Obviously, the questions will be related. Will be dependent on on the the content. Yeah. So how how is that maintained after the system is being purchased? Because that's where the question. So was. so so the system is not necessarily sold. Yes, you're subscribing to the system, oh, right? Okay. And we've got an education team that manages any changes, whether it's curriculum changes, oh. whether it's pedagogical changes, or anything into the system in terms of how, like for instance, your technicians would never be asked the same question around a microwave. Because the microwave that was there two, two years ago is not the same as the microwave now. So technology changes, approaches changes, methods changes. So we've got a team that looks at that and maintains that on a daily basis. So if life science, the cardiac cycle has changed, they found something new, right? We've got a team that looks at making sure that new additions of questions, approaches, knowledge, research is imported into the system. Did I answer the question? And uh, so, uh, the, uh, the questions, do they move up in terms of... Um, Difficult. Yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. If, for instance, you were to go to uh, mathematics, right, which we've covered from term one until um, term four, you'd see that the first thing that happens, maybe let me go and just show you. Um, I'll go to maybe Fazer or something. See if we can get that. And also, for the time of the time, they want to ask: Do are they similar or in style, or in, you know, to prepare the learners for maybe final exams? Yeah. As we might see uh, the even structuring uh, team, what they do, so that it almost prepares them not just for what we do in the class, but for final exams to get good grades. The school wants hundred percent pass marks. So yes, it does, because remember, the system is designed that kids are different. So let's say you miss Chava, you are getting 60s and you're moving on to 70s. So the question that you'll get and the question that I'll get, it's totally different. So the system is created that you can't memorize, you can't crack, you need to know. So every time it will change and change. It's like having a giant database of past papers in one place. It constantly just get, gauges your understanding. So do you use possibly Yeah, I think it's it. Yeah. But you need to be the citizen. Obviously not in the grade 10 and 11. It will be grade 12 to be your past papers. And as well, you can't be a 60 student and get the passing, uh, the, the, the final test or the final exam. You need to get certain uh, percentage. Mm. Like if you get 90, the system can see that, no, Mashab is ready to let us test her because the exams are coming soon, let's test her because she's far. But if I'm still getting 35, they will want me to improve on what we're doing the in the class right now. So, so to answer your first question in a different way, uh, the Malusi uh, question is, so the, the type of questions that you get here are aligned to the guidelines in terms of Malusi the Department of Basic Education guidelines in terms of how to test a grade 8, for instance. But what we've also done is we've added two elements into each and every subject. So there is foundational maths, for instance, because we're talking maths here. This is basically trying to introduce you to grade 8 mathematics and takes previous uh, grade and the new grade it introduces you. But at the end, when you've done all the terms, there is also what we call advanced mathematics. So even our questions, they basically are tiered up in different difficulty as well. Right? If Tsepo is getting your 70s or 80s, he's not going to get the same type of questions as myself because I'm getting 40s. Why? Because the system can see that Tsepo does not understand certain concepts and most of the concepts you understand. So it's going to be boring for Tsepo to be asked a question that is too elementary for him. So the system is designed exactly that way where it checks exactly where you are. Are you at foundational level or are you at advanced level? And what are the things that you don't understand? 
and is able to use AI to pick up the questions that are specifically more focused to you because you don't understand certain concepts. Right? So, though there's a bit of intelligence of the system, we are still keeping to the guidelines in terms of how questions are asked in terms of mathematics, life science, etc. Because what we want to do is to create an environment where you sit in front of an exam. It looks exactly like what you've been going through. Which means you are actually being drilled the same type of question you're going to receive in the exam. And on your previous exams, that are loaded there as well, right? As she was saying, you're not going to go into a previous exam and prepare for an exam if you're still getting 40s. So the system will say, did I cannot allow you to go through, please go and revise and do all the chapters again until you get maybe 65%. So the school will say, set it up as a minimum of 65% for everyone before they can go on to previous exams. So we will load all previous exams for the past five years. The same way, you go through content, you go through an exam, and it will give you explanation okay, question as well, to say this is where you went. So that by the time you sit in an exam, you know exactly what you're faced with and you're used to it. How often would you come into a school environment to train your teachers on this? I would assume that they perhaps would need refresher courses? Yeah. yeah. So, so in terms of our teaching, teacher learning, um, our teacher development and training, one of the biggest things that we are focused on is teacher development and training in terms of what we call next generation technologies. Others, I mean, DVP, we just had a meeting earlier on today where they were talking about 4IR as well. Right? We don't say 4IR, we call it next generation technologies right? that affect pedagogy, that affect the learning and teaching. Right? So, one of our biggest elements is teacher development and training. So, as part of the implementation, we are going to make sure we train all teachers, all subject heads, all principals, and all parents at the same time in how to use this, including the learners. Learners are trained obviously by the teachers. And we have a, a program that talks to continuous teacher development and training. Because without supporting teachers, there will be issues in terms of change management, there will be issues in terms of resistance to change, etc. etc. So we, we make sure there is proper integration of continuous support on a daily basis, especially the first year. The first year is mainly to deal with the teacher and the school, more than the learner. The second year then looks at the, the competency of the teachers up to the administrative layer and then it looks at the adoption in terms of the teachers as well as the learners. But the first year the key is the, is the teachers more than anything else. Because for the past six years we've done research and we've seen that you give something like this to a learner, they won't sleep, they'll play with this. Yeah. You give something like this to a teacher, they will watch the board and the beautiful. So you want to focus on the teacher because where there is proper adoption from the teacher's level, there will be proper adoption in terms of this because they know now how to integrate this. Now, for instance, if I know tomorrow I'm teaching a decimals, I would know how to integrate this into my chapter. And as long as I'm using this on a daily basis, I'm giving the learners assignments, I'm reviewing the assignments as a teacher and I have full control of the system, then there is proper adoption. You don't focus on the teacher, you have big problems. Right? So the last one I'll show you is I'll log in as a school now. So I'm a principal now and I'll show you what exactly I'm going to see as a principal. Right? Now I need to be able to know how many uh, people I have as my staff, how many learners are there, how they are allocated per grade per class and how those grades are doing at any given stage. So I can create grades and as a principal, I can see exactly what's happening in each and every grade. So I can see how many learners are getting above target, how many learners are getting above minimum target, and how many learners are struggling that are getting below minimum. Right? Now, this information assists me to deal with my subject heads, because those are the guys that are key to say, okay, there's a head of English. I need to engage them every Thursday or every whatever. And I ask them, guys, what are the interventions created where are we lacking? And the nice thing is, I can actually see where the challenges are in terms of each and every class or each and every grade. So I can say we have a problem in English, but where exactly? Maybe it's 
sentences, maybe it's Macbeth, maybe it's Romeo and Juliet. What is the, the problem? Yeah. Now I'm giving my age. I am giving my <laughs> giving away my age now, yes? So as a principal, I've just clicked on the class, I can see grade 8, 29 learners, 2 above target, 1 above minimum, and maybe 0 at below minimum. As a principal, I can also see all of them in terms of their performance. I can see their dashboards, I can see everything, I can view their assignments, I can review assignments as a principal. But one thing that is key as well, I'm able to manage the output on a daily basis as a principal. So no one can lie to me and say, no, my learners are struggling because of APC. I can see what is the problem. So I can also, sorry to cut you, but you also assessing the teacher's performance at the same time. At the same time. Remember, as a principal, I'm, I'm a teacher as well. So I know what is happening in each and every class. Because the biggest challenge in the education space is no one knows what's happening in each and every class. The biggest problem as an MEC that is now saying I'm number seven in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the in the country. It's difficult for me to pick it up and say this is the problem because I'm not managing the challenge every single day. I'm not. But now I have a tool where I can manage challenges, I can manage strengths, I can manage weaknesses. Now I imagine a situation where at a provincial level, when we set up intervention camps, where we are basically going to say, okay, let's take kids to intervention camps. You can now start separating these children per challenges and strengths. And you have one camp, about that are getting 80s. You have another camp, about time that are getting 60s. You know, you know exactly what you need to do with them each and every single day. Because you are managing something you can touch and feel. Now the biggest challenge we have with our education system, everyone agree, it's not a good system. Okay, what is the problem? We don't know what is the problem. Others are blaming the curriculum changes from this curriculum to that curriculum. Others are blaming that our teachers are outdated. Others are blaming our schooling systems, the children are now are so shy. There are lots, but now with the system like this, you know exactly what you manage. I can also go into the learners and I can allocate the learners per grade as well. You can say, okay, Tsepo is doing too well in grade 8, he doesn't deserve to be in grade 8, let's move to grade 9. Right? And I can activate their license, I can deactivate their license, I can manage their uh, student, uh, student details, and I can move them into a different class. And one, one important thing, I can invite their guidance as well. What does that mean? Now, I can now invite your parents to be able to view the system right now. So you can choose, maybe you've got four guidance, two guidance, it's up to you. Yes, so does that, come, sorry. does that come at a cost, you know, as in the number of users we have in the system? Is there a cost? So, 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 so our, our licenses are per learner. It's not per learner, per teacher, per school, per parent. Okay. So if you're saying in your school you've got 1,000 learners, it doesn't matter how many teachers you have, it doesn't matter how many parents each and every child has. You can have 10 parents, it's mm -hmm. up to you. But we basically are focused on the learner, making sure the learner is fully resourced and is fully supported at the same time. So, I can also update student passwords for those two. Oh, sorry, you had a question. Yes. What interventions do you put in place to ensure continuous engagement? On the system? Yeah, for, yeah. so usually what we find is that people are excited, oh, we're going to great innovation center. Yeah. It gets utilized, it gets utilized, and then you see, mm -hmm. yes, the, 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 the teachers, um, the computer lab facilitators who've been trained um, and would schedule it into the, the school's um, uh, periods, timetable, yes. Um, but, you know, the engagement there is because we are a kind of service community. Yeah. So much child who is in a dual professional home, both me and my husband, we probably engage with it more because it's Wi-Fi and you know, but in other service communities, the parents literacy as well, one is something to consider. And then uh, the teachers can also uh, in terms of their training, 
is not on par with the teacher's experience, for yeah. example. So what? How do we keep the machine well going? So the first thing that we basically have created is a, is a very much comprehensive training program. So our teacher development and training is not a generic teacher development and training. It's a, a multi-tiered teacher development and training that recognizes where each and every teacher is in terms of literacy, in terms of pedagogy, in terms of uh, content creation, etc., etc. So each and every teacher gets graded to say, this is where you are. So we know how to support you because this is where you are. We're not going to expect you to create a, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet if you, you are not at that level. So firstly is to make sure we understand where each and every teacher is. That allows us to close the gaps and take them from where they are to the synesthesia level. Number two is to make sure that the teachers that are sitting on the higher tier after training or before training are recognized at those tiers as well. That, that's when we also then adopt what we call ICT champions and ICT masters or, or master teachers as well within the school. Because the, if you are a master teacher within the school, you have certain responsibilities in terms of assisting teachers on certain elements. If you are an ICT champion, you've got certain responsibilities again in terms of the project. Now, we, we have a teacher development and training team that will manage those outputs. So all the teachers that are at the lowest level are managed at the level, but the idea is to make sure all of them in terms of their learning curve, they grow. So we will have reviews, whether it's once a month, once a week, twice a week. That's why I said the first year is very important. Because the biggest challenge with the implementation of e-learning is coming to a school and giving them technology and giving them training for now just to be able to touch and use the interactive boards and to open up the, 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 the tablets or, or the laptops. And you drop them, you leave them out. You need a proper continuous support and training program that makes sure it also incentivizes them as they grow in terms of their levels. That is why we have a deal with the SACE as well where they also give them a, a credits in terms of their training. If you move from a, an ICT champion to a master teacher, you get credits. So even myself as a teacher, I want it because it talks to my level of payment and other things as well. So our teacher development and training is very comprehensive in that way. The same approach we use with the parents. Remember parents, the parents that can't even touch a lecture. It's the same with the teachers. Because remember, a teacher can be a parent in the other way. So we will basically take it that way. But the, the nice thing with the parents is that you can, as a learner, choose any parent. Your sister can be your guardian, right? Who is a bit more in terms of literacy, in terms of computers. So we always find interventions in terms of how do we make sure we, we integrate this and make sure from the household to the school there is proper uh, at the same time. So, the <laughs> yeah. so, so, so I, I don't know what he's showing me, but, <laughs> but we also work with teacher development centers. Okay. Right? We also have tutor centers at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, our tutor centers we will control. The different hubs in the. Exactly. So, for example, right now we are launching a classroom in KZN. Yeah. That we're kitting up. We have a center in Doom. Yeah. That the, the teachers will call. Exactly. exactly. So we have partnerships with uh, all the DBE and all the different departments. So each and every department will say, I've got so many number of teacher development uh, centers. For instance, I'll make an example here, we've got about 18 teacher development centers in Gauteng, and then Eastern Cape, we've got about nine. So we will work through those teacher development centers. But we also have smaller teacher development centers in terms of tutor centers. And then the next layer is actually support centers within the schools. Like in Gauteng, corner, what we call headquarter centers. I've never been see if you, I don't know if you've gone to the different schools. So we've got what we call headquarter centers in Gauteng. These are small support uh, centers within the school where you have uh, support uh, technicians there, where you have teacher development and training support guys. So teachers know that within the school, I have resources. If my interactive board is not working or I'm failing something, I'm not going to stress. I'm going to say, kids, keep doing this, then I just go into the teacher development center or the support center. And I say, hey, hey, Lulay, what's happening? Come with me. And he asks.
So there are different tiers as well in terms of support, and that is important. If you don't have proper support, there is no e-learning implementation. Zero. There is no adoption. Like in the Eastern Cape, what was done before, right, where teachers were given laptops and connectivity, most of them literally take those laptops nicely in their boxes, they put them under the bed or somewhere safe, and they said, thank you very much. One day when the department wants their laptop, it's safe. And why? Because the layer of teacher development and training and continuous training and support was missing. And that is the most important layer that we emphasize everywhere we go. We're not going to teach a, te a, a, a teacher how to use an interactive board. That's not what we were there to do. We are there to say, how do you take an interactive board and integrate it into your pedagogy, your teaching skills and your teaching style and your methods on a daily basis? How do you prepare a presentation of a lesson? How do you prepare an assessment on the interactive board? How do you use your laptop as a content creation tool where you, put, you, you get videos from different spaces and you're able to create a lesson? And how do you then take that, transfer that into an assessment and review and be able to track that and say, this is where we are lacking in terms of my class and these are the interventions. If you cannot do that, then it's pointless for us to teach you how to use the gadgets. Because it's not the gadgets, but it's what the gadgets can do for you in their environment. Okay. So, I think here we've basically covered the, the, the school. Right? And I can also allocate my staff and be able to say Mastaba has now been um, um, upgraded or given a promotion from a normal teacher to an HOD. Then I can change her, her classes there. I can say, okay, now as this, we've got three classes, but you're also now a head of the whole maths division or you're the deputy principal. So I can allocate anything I need to allocate on the school in terms of staff in terms of learners, in terms of my grades as well. But most importantly, I can then be able to allocate the teacher as well at the same time. So the pair, the pair at the same time. Do you receive your email in the phone? Because I wanted to show you, if I go to the learner, right, and I go and say, I want to invite a guardian, I put in your email address there. What's your email address? Let's say it's simple training. Sample a training. Sample training. Oh, you made it and then I can invite you. Right? So it will then send you an email right now with a link. Then you can be able to create a profile. And what is very important is now that you can start viewing that particular learners, that particular learners, Melo uh, Bush's uh, programs. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. So you can then create a profile and everything that Melobuche does, you are able to see. You are able to set up assignments, you are able to view their progress, you are able to uh, understand what is happening. Remember each and every assignment, the, the teacher also can add comments on it and be able to say, hey, Master, you are lacking here because you do not attend this class and I understand. So let's set you up uh, an assignment. And then the, the parent will like, why did you not attend the class? Because you were supposed to be at school. And the parent now knows that on that Saturday you actually went out with your boyfriend and you didn't go to school. <laughs> so all the things that are key as well for parents to know, are you going to school? What, what is happening with your assignments? Why are you working with your assignments? And it also creates a communication channel between the parents and the teachers at the same time. Right. So last one, before we finish up, is to show you how Example, we actually view the learner. So if you wanted, you could have continued then created your own profile, and this is what you're going to see. So you can actually see that Melo Buche has two guardians. One is George Nisi, and the other one is Adele Ben uh, Badet. Yeah, Adele. Uh, Adele maybe is the is the mother, George is the father, both of them can view what is happening with the Melo Musha. And as a school, we can be able to set whether we want you to only view or we want you to also engage in terms of assignments and creation of assignments at the same time. 
Now you can see for now it's only two, but you can have as many as you need to have. And I can be able to then go and look at her dashboard. And she'll never be able to lie to me and say, no, Dad, I'm getting 90s in mathematics. You know? And I can be able to see exactly where she is. I can look at her assignments. I can look at both the completed assignments and the outstanding assignments. The ones that are outstanding, you can see when they were due. She's sitting with assignments that are sitting three months. Remember, as accelerated, Working with you, we are able to monitor this on a daily basis and we're able to pick it up real time now that this school is not adopting the system. We don't need to wait for two months, three months. We are able to see that, no, 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 why has no one um, uh, logged in just yesterday for the past two days? Same time we send technicians, they do uh, their assessment, they find out maybe there is problems and everyone has been told that don't go into the XLA now, the new politician is coming now, it's going to change things. Now we can be able to manage things as they happen. We don't wait for the end of the year to say, no, ish, Korea, hey, we don't know what happened. You can actually see that yesterday, Meloki did not log in. What was the problem? Because she was, Megasha Mashu, you know? So you can see all the ass assignments that are due. You can also be able to see completed assignments, yes? And you are able to see per subject, when it was said, when it was done, how well did you do? And you can actually go back to the assignments and say, no, but you did this in this assignment. And you are able to then have proper progress in terms of where your learner is or your child is. Right. Now, this can be extended to the second manager. It can be extended to the district director. It can be extended to the senior management in the department up to the MEC. So for the first time, an MEC can be able to actually be able to track what's happening in, in his province or her province real time. You don't need to wait for end of the year to see whether you are number nine or number six. You can actually see where you are and be able to do reviews every two months with your executive team and objectively deal with issues and say, why are we starting with mathematics, guys? Right? Now, the platform is not only there to deliver content, which is maths, English, etc. We are now incorporating special subjects in there, like for instance, aviation. Remember, schools have now what we call specialized schools, which is now focused on aviation, it's focused on um, hotels, technical training, etc. So we're now incorporating that into the platform at the same time. So next time you see this platform, it's going to not only have maths, English, and sciences, but it will have aviation, maritime, agricultural sciences, electronics, robotics, etc. We're finalizing the robotics uh, curriculum now. Uh, the biggest challenge is that DBE has not yet stratified the curriculum, and now it's going to look like a grade. So we're busy finalizing that. Okay. So business sciences, soon we're going to have. <laughs> so, so we, we're going to ha end up having grade 1 until grade 12, all subjects including specialized subjects, previous exams, and most importantly, if a child does not understand, they have a button that they're going to press and say, I want a tutor. You can press and say, I need a tutor. And we've got our system linked into a tutorial system as well. Now, that is key because your parent works as a tutor, I've just invited you as a parent, the teacher works as a tutor as well that can support you and your whole ecosystem. But most importantly, if you have a person that you can call a tutor and that you are engaging with, I mean, those that are paying tutors, they know it's not cheap. Now, because it will be electronic, it's going to be a bit cheaper. But most importantly, we're going to now add tutor centers in the country, in different areas, in different hubs, where a learner can actually walk into a tutor center and be able to identify themselves, whether with a we stand or a card and we are able to say, okay, come in. Immediately when you come in, we know who you are. You log in, we know where your challenges are. And maybe on that day we have a tutor that specializes in mathematics, geometry, and is able to assist you. As long as you belong in our network, anywhere in the country, you can come to any tutor center and get an assistant. Now, what am I leaving out? I feel like I'm leaving out something. Am I leaving out something? Mm. You don't have to also go in. You can phone in. You want extra support? Let's say mom and dad are not understanding how the system is working, they can phone in easily and get assisted. 
Uh, they can also phone in for extra help if they need extra help. Um, I don't know, what else would they, I mean, it's a whole turnkey solution. Yeah. It's a holistic approach, so what would you guys like? So we're going to have uh, uh, your e-books as well, which mm -hmm. are system, videos, 3D, 4D, everything on your platform. I don't want to bore you take long enough that I could have shown you what 3D is going to happen. You want know? the beat? Just as a teaser. Yeah, uh, because the, the, the content is not present in my mm -hmm. Well, well, well the, uh, the answer to that is, is a bit different. Remember, it depends who you are. Yeah. Tempo wants 3D. Tando wants black and white. Each and every learner is different. That's why you see on our content, we've included different types of pictures because we're not the same you know there is a layer that really would not get it when you every time you at 3d videos they want to see a picture like, oh now i understand that's why we also have audio because audio covers the ones that are good in listening you know so it's difficult to be static that's why our 3d we're going to have the 3d library mm -hmm. which means you can literally go into the library and search and say i want amuba and it pulls out amuba pulls out the plan, etc. Then it's easy because it covers you the, if you are a learner that wants to engage in 3D a lot as well. Otherwise if we push in 3D everywhere, there are others that are going to be behind at the same time. There's one last thing. Do you like video content? I love video content. Okay. <laughs> so that's what we're integrating with now. Yeah. During December we'll be rolling that out. I think that's the thing we forgot at Mr T. What's it? Video. So at the end yeah. of each section, you take a test. Still not understanding what's happening, you can get either a tutor, you can watch the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But short little videos, 30 seconds to 5 minutes maximum. So, so ev eventually, eventually, when you have the Excellent platform, you are able to have different types of resources and support at the same time as a learner. Or I was forgetting the, the research component as well. Okay. We, we, we're including research. So, for instance, if you're doing life science and you're supposed to submit uh, an assignment, a long assignment, where you need to engage yourself, you can actually research on the platform. Where it basically pulls from different libraries, uh, electronic libraries, in terms of life science. You don't need to go to Google and YouTube and other things. You get actually one environment, you are able to get research, you're able to get your ebooks, you're able to get 3D, etc. etc. So even 3D comes in different forms as well. Right? There is 3D that meets hearts, sorry, or classes. You're able to rotate the heart. You're able to dissect the heart. We're bringing, um, we're bringing uh, 3D holographs. Uh, uh, yes, um, simulators as well. And you are able to then have a heart dissected. Right? So there are different ways as well of depicting the same. Because I can read about the heart, I can see the heart pumping, I can see a bit of blood, except it doesn't like blood, but I don't want to see blood, you know. So it, it goes a bit of a long way in terms of how you actually try and cover all the learners in terms of the learning process at the same time. I mean, I wish I had this 15 years ago. <laughs> I was, oh gosh, I struggled with like respiratory system because you're trying to visualize that. That's what I was thinking about. Um, yeah, for me, I think because we're in other service communities, and I think that's what keeps me in my head. Um, we definitely need a, we, we, would, we would, if we were to take this on, have a very, very tight, solid. So, we're know, trying to cover that. Integration. A bit of engines and other things. <laughs> You know, integration, engagement, yeah. teacher stimulation, like yeah. because it's, it's for us we get it because we engage with internet and uh, dashboards all the time. Mm. But um, when I take it to one of my schools in you know, in Bungu, where I invested two million, I really need a turnkey with teachers and you know, and, and it must not just be a one-off. It should yeah. be like. Even if you go once a month and engage my teachers and I can that, that is why we always include support 
support services. For example, they can't call it. You know, it has yeah. an issue. You know, yeah. for example, they can't sit for 20 minutes on a phone. I can. They can't. Temple can. They can't. Um, for a support service, for example. Um, yeah. Support. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, that for me would be. You can crack that hurdle for me. Oh, wait. Time. No, it's done. Oh. It's done. Remember, <laughs> remember I, I gave you the different tiers. Yeah. So we've got your teacher development centers, we've got your tutor centers, like and you've got your support centers within each and every school. So you end up creating a network of support. So uh, how about, uh, is it possible for you guys to go into the school more regularly, as opposed to, to us taking them out to teach it? So there could be minimal go out, go to the center, but more that, that is why when it's first child, we, we, we basically are creating school-based support, support centers. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, because, yeah, because remember, yeah. those, those support centers in the schools, they report to the tutor center and the teacher development center. So eventually there is a review that gets done in terms of where, where are you guys. So if a school support center is struggling, they know they need to call a higher level technician or a, a teacher development resource at a tutor center or a teacher development center and they can basically come to the school. Now, the reason why we always emphasize the fact that we have real-time data in terms of what's happening in each and every school per grade per learner is for us to be able to support your schools. We need that data. So before there is challenges, we can actually see there is a challenge in mathematics in such a space. We engage the teacher development center a group, like for instance, maybe for you in Gauteng, and say, listen, there's a, a challenge in mathematics subject advisors, we then create an intervention in conjunction with them because we are then in the schools, we know what the challenges, we talk to the principals. So that is why there is always a support service that is included to make sure there is continuous training and continuous support. You miss that, then I can guarantee you that I'm not even going to email. Okay. But that is why we've created the tiers because the school support has certain types of resources, but we also map them with the teachers. That is why it's important to identify the master teachers, the ICT champions, etc., within the teaching group as well. Because they engage with the support center and we are able to create interventions as we go to say, okay, what are the challenges on a weekly, daily basis? Then, in that way, sitting at Samsung head office, you don't need to stress about this thing. Yeah. Because when we give you any report, we are giving you a report that you yourself can log in and be able to see what is really happening, what interventions have been created. Where were the challenges? Why? Why were the challenges? Sometimes kids can't go to a high school because the river is full and they can't jump over. Yeah? And the teacher saying, I can't get to the class. Now what can I do? I can literally sit at home and set up assignments and engage with the class. Or whoever, wherever they are. So we no longer have an issue where if learners are not in the class, there's no learning and teaching. Yeah. Whether parents are doing saying, no, let's close the school or not, learners are, are learning. And teachers are teaching. But if the innovation center is at the classroom, what would you do with The innovation centers are within the school and, and within the and district, yeah. and they are within the circuits as well at the same time. So they are in different spaces. And they are all designed for when purpose, right? It's to recognize the, the gaps and the strengths that exist in each and every circuit and every district and every province, right? We're not going to put in a, a, a big support uh, group where we know that, for instance, let's make an example that uh, teachers incentive, right? They won't receive the biggest support because most of them are already at master level. So we are basing our support resources and allocation based on where we are in the whole learning camp at the same time. So the guys that have lots of master trainers and master teachers, etc. They will have support, but the support won't be the same as Mbumbulu, for instance. Mbumbulu will have more support because they need that support. Until they are able to be leveled with those guys, the support will slowly be deteriorating in terms of our resource allocation. Because eventually what do we want to do is to transform the schooling environment to be all master teachers. That's where we want to get to. And the only way we can do that is to use the teacher development centers, is to use our tutor centers as well as the training institution like our medical needs to make sure it's proper and comprehensive support. If you don't have that, 
is a problem. But number one, the system tells you where these challenges at any given stage. And that is key. And it doesn't matter whether you're in Bumbul, you're going to or whatever, as long as there is MTN Vodacom Celsi, you're going to be able to go into our network. And most of the, the parts of the countries are covered. If you're not covered, then we'll find a solution. And I'm happy that you're talking about previously disadvantaged areas because that's where they are really struggling. I mean, that's where that's all where they are really right? Yeah. And that's where people go for corporate citizenship. You, know, yeah. you want to move out of Khartoum, you want you know, what, what, us, what our project partners' research is telling us is that there's 10 times more infrastructure required from training to the um, security, you know, physical security around the investment to um, it's just everything. For goodness, you know, um, a teacher in a township school in Khartoum, in a township school, in case they know Eastern Cape, it's so different. There's yeah. still a tier of levels so, there. So, so what, you, what you're talking about mainly is it's your physical infrastructure, for instance. Are there desks? Is there a door? Is there windows? Is the lights, the ceiling, you know, those things add money into you creating the classroom of the future. And one of the reasons why we have designed this system is because we recognize the fact that e learning should not be happening in a physical brick and mortar class. Because what we've done in the past four years, for instance, in the different provinces, most of the money did not go into the actual empowerment of teacher and learner. But it actually went into the renovation of the class. You build less, you know how much it costs to build a lab. Now, if you're running a system like this, you don't need a lab. The lab becomes your device. Right? The lab becomes now the support that you give that learner and the teacher as well as the school. So the money that could have been spent for an extra door, a butler door, an alarm system, new floors, new chairs, now can be directed to what do we really need, which is teacher development and training and making sure we're tracking where challenges are at any given stage. And in that way, the child that is in Tembisa and the child that sits in Kulu, they will be in the same level. Because it doesn't matter that my school does not have a door or a window. I have the same system. I have access to the same tools. I have access to the same content, assessments, everything. How many students are there? Yeah, let me interject. It. How many students do you have there? We, we set up uh, labs for 60 seaters, so 60 kids per, per place. Okay, but I mean, like, the school itself, how many? Ranges 800,000. 800,000 on average. Yeah, okay. And the question is, how do they make sure they rotate in that 60 seat at the same time? Oh, so, yeah. So, having a system like this, you no longer need rotation. Yeah. Everyone has access to the same content wherever they are. Do you, do you guys have a, an LMS in place? A learning system. Like a learning system similar to this, anything like that? So, um, in most of our schools we do because we partner with the network partners in Tenvodacom, etc. Yeah. But uh, going forward, we are looking to have also our own classrooms specialized in Samsung. Okay. Um, labs, innovation labs, and we uh, involve them for our own kind of scheme where it will be a 60 seater so that each child has access to their own system, um, that sort of thing, and then obviously they rotate grade by grade. All right. Yeah, and either they like the classroom, um, like the subjects you showed us, uh, life science, etc. Plus, knowing that they're coding and and yes, in yes. So the timetable will be structured to ensure that all classrooms, all levels and grades have access to that um, innovation lab. Um, but again, you know, uh, one of the challenges we had, I mean, I've used one school in Bongtin Lisa. Uh, I think at the time we were still starting out, and but yeah. it was a big uh, a learning experience for us. Was we we gave you know set up the classroom, set up tablets for the purpose of teacher learning, and that is where we saw, you know. Now teachers are watching both the beautiful streaming, yeah, yeah. you know, um, that sort of thing. They're using it for our personal use as well. They've been off and teaching and learning, etc. Um, and one of the things that we found is because we didn't have the mechanism, the backbone mechanism to continuously keep the school accountable 
engage in the, supporting them in the same time. In the, in the, in the so, 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 so our proposal to you is using the labs as your support yeah. area yeah. instead of using the labs as the actual delivery areas. Because then it means you always need to do rotation and manage and I mean how long can you have in the lab as a learner out of grade 8 to grade 12 if there's only one lab. So what we would like to propose is to use the labs as your, your support areas. But so you say you take the kids out and go how when well, the kids can come to the lab. Yeah. No, they're they still rotating. Coming, they're, they're, you're still rotating through them, but right. the objective is different. But after right. school, now they can come extra help, right? Yeah. Oh. So, so, so I have access to my curriculum, right? Because it's sitting on my tablet, sitting on my laptop, sitting on my device or whatever I'm using, right? I'm only going to the lab because there's a special intervention that the teacher wants to maybe assist them close. Or maybe I'm going to the lab because I don't understand life science and the ease a tutor there that is going to assist me to understand better or to go through the curriculum better. Or there are certain things I don't understand of the actual system and I need assistance, whether I'm a teacher, I'm a principal, or I'm a learner at the same time. So the use of the lab is still there, but the objective is no longer to say the only time I'll have access to content, the only time I'll have access to the, the tools is when I'm in the lab. You can be outside the lab, the whole, in fact, what you're saying is for every lab, you have the whole school covered in terms of having access to the content. Yeah. But you use the lab as a support area. The next question, obviously, would be how are those learners going to have access to tablets? Yeah. And that's, uh, that's basically where we come in because we've got partnerships with the departments, we've got uh, funders as well that can assist in pushing money as well in terms of buying those tablets, etc., etc. But government is also looking at buying lots of tablets as well. Yeah. Now the idea is let's use the lab for a support um, exercise more than anything else. Because otherwise the adoption will be a big affected or impacted. Because the only time I'm able to actually have access to these tools is if I have that allocation with the lab. And that's the only time I have. But if the whole school boom, has access, right, then we are able to have a totally different kind of a way of managing things in terms of integration and adoption at the same time. How many, how many periods are there on a daily basis? Like five, five or six? Five, Three or five minutes. Yeah, how many periods do you know? Eight. Are there eight? Oh my word, that's even better. Because, like what, what T is saying here, is that if we, okay, let me just show you the numbers. If you have uh, 60 seats, I'm guessing that means behind a computer, right? Right. Right, and you've got eight slots in a day. You could rotate them at 480 kids a day. You could be rotating through that, that um, let, it's called an e-lab. So that means you could essentially take a school of a thousand and on every second day they have at least one session in that, um, in that learning center. Then after school they can access it constantly. They can connect, they can keep on learning the whole time. I think what we basically are saying is let's create a use case scenario and, and test it out. Because why not? You know, I'm trying to say. Now we can start with one school. One school. I mean, like one basic use case is all you need to get enough data to see if it works. So if it doesn't work, then you don't use it. If it does, you, you can roll it out elsewhere. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I think also for me, what's imperative is the continuous reporting of impact. Yeah. You know, to say how our innovation map holistically from software to hardware to is fully utilized and is an improvement um, because you in know, terms of performance, performance yeah. teachers, teacher, teacher, teacher tracing other instruments where yeah. you can text it. Because some of the teachers, because <laughs> 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 uh, some of the teachers in, in these underserved communities, you find she last did a teacher course forty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. never she refreshed herself. She's you know she, I mean. Gosh, you know, even when you engage her as a corporate investor, yeah. trying to just assess, hi, how are you? Da, da, da. You know, there's, yeah, and, and most teachers, tough. They, they, they're yeah. scared of technology, of changing. Yeah. So then when we have support is. and we have our people inside the school, oh, literally every that. single day they're there, a teacher that. becomes more comfortable with 
and just ask, oh, so how do I do this? Because they know they've got to support day at school. So, 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 so if you look at what has happened in the provinces, for instance, where we've implemented and where there was continuous support, I mean, you know, my institutions are found like Microsoft that have comprehensive teacher support uh, budgets and training as well that we've engaged our HP and the DEM and, and others. So we don't work in isolation as well. We engage other institutions that are, have interest in the space. The idea was to make sure there's a proper adoption and we are able to do continuous impact studies. Yeah. Because teaching teachers is different because you, at the same time you want to make sure you preserve their knowledge and how they deliver a lesson. But you are now saying how do we integrate other resources to assist you at the same time. So that is why I keep on emphasizing the issue of teacher development and training, especially continuous teacher development and training. Teachers that are trained, that are confident, they will never not use this. Yeah. They'll yes, never not use this. I can take you to a couple of schools where we've basically implemented and you will see to say, listen, hey, even the even the learners, you, you can see even in the school the way they walk, the way they can use totally a different type of a learner than a learner that is just walking around, getting scuffed in and just what wanting to impress the girlfriend, let's go. The ones that are carrying devices and they're engaging on the devices behave totally differently. Even the teachers in the classrooms, the engagement is yeah. totally different as well at the same time. So See, the I think. Teachers, oh, sorry. You go, you go. The teachers also um, receive e learning training as well. Yeah, yeah. So that, that is the one that introduces to the learner and say, oh, yeah, we've created your logins, go into your tablet now, log in. Everyone has their login. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's go to chapter one. Teachers, teachers, all right, let's move on. It's the teacher controlling the environment. And making sure that you don't take the control away from the teacher. Mm. Though we are wanting to make sure that learners become independent beings, you still want the teacher to feel important and that I actually have control. I've got this. Yeah. It's my class, and I'm managing, managing yeah, the output, the input, and I'm managing the assessment at the same time. That is why I said that the, the most important element in the introduction of e learning is the teacher training and continuous support. You do not have that. In your fiber, basically. So that is why you have initial teachers adopting because they're still excited, but because you don't have continuous support, yeah. continuous, you know, and you have teachers within the school that are custodians for certain things. They are responsible to be achieving certain things, doing reports, making sure they view in terms of adoption, where are the challenges, and you're working with them on a daily basis, weekly basis. Remember, the teacher that is sitting at the, the the most basic teacher wants to get to a master teacher as well because there's incentives that we've created for them. So they want to engage. If you put a, put a, put a meeting where all of them are talking about e-learning and issues of e-learning, they want to be there because they want to participate and be able to move. Because they now know that now I'm an employee, I can go to synesthesia. Yeah. I can go to synesthesia and say, oh, let me show you how I actually create a lesson or develop a lesson, do an assessment, using the same tools that synesthesia is doing. Sometimes, even synesthesia and curious, they don't have what we have in terms They don't. They might have the best resources, but there are schools in Tembisa, Soweto and others that are more equipped in terms of e-learning than Curio and other schools. Because they are still running off projectors and those guys are engaging on interactive books, they are engaging dynamic e-content, they are engaging uh, platforms like this and those schools in in the in the Crawfords and others that not adopted. So as a teacher coming to Crawford, coming from Tempe, so you can now show them something they don't know. Yeah. And that's why teachers actually like engaging this thing and like engaging those ICT workshops and committees. Because they know that it benefits them at an individual level as well. Uh, okay. <laughs> And you also mentioned something about an LMS because I think ideally when you have um, you know, an even system that, that works well because I'm even looking at the navigation, it looks so easy and Well that's it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Really easy. So you got you got e learning and an LMS. It's a you got actually not everyone's aware of this. It's a learning management system mm -hmm. and it's a learner management system. So learner management systems like what you saw with the principal that can gauge everything from the top down. You can set how the teacher can gauge from the top down, setting assignments, etc. 
That's very different from just a learning management system where you just learn and learn and learn. Okay. So you basically the genius over here has come and said, okay, this is what his you know his studies, PhD studies have taught him, and we put them all together. So I just thought I wanted to actually comment on one little thing over here, and that is you know your teacher support. For every teacher, for, for every um, class of 30 in your e-lab, there should be three uh, support teachers. Okay, and these are, are going to be upliftment teachers, and not upliftment, uh, junior teachers that are coming in from, uh, from where the seats are. Is that yeah, right? I, I actually have to spoken to you about that, if you remember. Yeah. So we, we've got an agreement with different CETAs and different um, uh, training institutions where we have more than 300,000, people don't know that we're actually sitting at 382,000 unemployed qualified teachers in the country. Mm -hmm. So we're pulling from that pool of qualified teachers and we're making sure they are trained on next generation technologies in terms of how you integrate next generation technologies into pedagogy. We're then using them to support the school, the, 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 the classroom, yeah. or the, the, the learners. In the so, the so, so number really one, something. government then pays for them or a certain institution pays for them as part of their internship program. Yes. Now, the, the nice thing is now we can do lots of placements because we have a space for them where they are going to be able to utilize their skill set. That's basically what we're doing right now. So for, for every lab, you can possibly have three or, or, or four yeah, you um, have support six. areas. So you can imagine if you had to have each and every class converted into an e-learning class, mm. then you almost would have one support teacher for every two classrooms, something like that. Now times the number of classrooms or times the number of schools, I think you mentioned 3,000 schools. Now, um, in terms of what, what you've invested in? Yeah. No, we actually, not that many. We had a few before which we closed down the investment to have a social impact for the very reasons that we discussed mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. support, yeah. the community vandalizes, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But it was an expensive and with valuable learning experience. So mm -hmm. now that we've cleaned those out, we now start piece by piece over um, to say new innovation come to labs in existing institutions supported by the department what systems do we need now need to put in place in terms of the turnkey solution? Teacher, principal, learner, that sort of thing. So, so, yeah, eventually our platform says instead of spending lots of money in the actual infrastructure, we need to spend more money and time in terms of the learner and the teacher. Mm -hmm. it's just that and that is why we're moving a bit away from the actual brick and mortar focus. Yeah. It's just that in the schools that we do support, we also want to create like um, a conducive learning environment in terms of the brick and mortar. So yeah. it's a underserved school, and we want to do it nice. Yeah, you know, and inviting, so. and then yeah. you set up nice. Mm -hmm. And then you also have the additional yeah. budget where the software support, the teacher yeah. support. Is we touched on that yesterday. Yeah. Saying so, like you need a place in a community uh, where where. If you're sitting in a, in a society where you don't think that there's much option to get out, and you're sitting on the corner with your friends, and you're like, well, I'm 18, I've got no hope in, in five years' time, I'm still going to be here, I'm not going to ever drive a Range Rover. So you need to create a place, a Samsung, where these children can go in and feel comfortable and safe and, and start dreaming of the future, of what's possible, I think. Right, so hence why we try to really make the, rooms, the, the learning space quite, you know, jazzed up a bit and we don't go to town but also it's important this is actually 